Today we are going to learn about Meniere's disease. Meniere's disease is also called as endolymphatic hydrops. In this disease, there is a excessive collection of endolymph in the in the ear because of some pathologies. So this disease is most common in the age group of 35 to 60 years and most commonly occur in males. We know the anatomy of inner ear in which it divided into three parts. Scala vestibuli, scala media, and scala tympani. Scala vestibuli and tympani is contain perilymph, while scala media is contain endolymph, which is secreted by the stria vascularis. Let's talk about normal physiology of endolymph. I am already told that endolymph is secreted by stria vascularis. So, look at this diagram. There is endolymphatic duct and endolymphatic sac. So, the endolymph is transported to endolymphatic sac by endolymphatic duct by endolymphatic duct and endolymph absorbed by endolymphatic sac what are the causes of this disease we already discussed the normal physiology of endolymph there is a excessive production of endolymph by strabascularis may cause this disease if the blockage of duct therefore the transport is not occur if there is defective absorption or there is a food allergy, maybe sodium and water retention. These are the causes of this disease. Let's talk about the clinical features. The first one is vertigo because there is a potassium entry into perilymph and this may cause irritation to the ear. Another one is sensory neural hearing loss due to iron gradient imbalance. Another is tinnitus and may cause oral fullness. After some time, the reasoner's membrane heals and due to this, there is a iron gradient return to normal. That's why hearing comes to normal. Potassium restore in endolymph. The vertigo may be normal. And that's why we can say that there is a episodic vertigo or fluctuating sensory neural hearing loss. Let's talk about diagnosis. The first one is pure tone audiometry. In pure tone audiometry, if patient have sensory neural hearing loss, then we can give IV glycerol. Glycerol have hygroscopic property. It absorbs the excessive amount of endolymph in the ear. And then if we repeat the test, we have improved hearing more than 10 dB or up to 10 dB. It's diagnosed that it is Meniere's disease. In pure tone audiometry, what happened in early Meniere disease? So look at this diagram. There is a rising curve and the interpretations are more hearing loss at low frequency and less hearing loss at high frequency. Look at this diagram. And what happened in late Meniere's disease? So look at this graph. There is a sloping curve and more hearing loss at high frequency which is given in blue line and this is unilateral sloping curve. So these are the properties of late Meniere's disease in pure tone audiometry. Look at this graph. Oh what? There are two bilateral sloping curves. So if there are two bilateral sloping curves, always remember that there may be chances of pre acusis or autodoxicity. The another method for diagnosis is electrocochleography. It is the invasive procedure but confirmatory test. In normal ear, the summating potential is less than 30% of accent potential. But in Meniere's disease, the summating potential is greater than 70% than accent potential. Let's talk about treatment. The treatment of this disease is divided into two parts. First one is acute episode, another one is maintenance phase. In acute episode, we can give the labyrinthine sedative to the patient like cinerazine, prochlorpyrazine and say that take some bed rest. In maintenance phase, there are different types of procedures we can apply. The first one is medical. In that, we can give the potassium sparing diuretics. They can take away the excessive water from the body and therefore there is a reduction in the production of endolymph. Another one is beta blocker. They are useful for 
increasing the absorption and antihistaminics they increase the blood supply to the inner ear and therefore they also contribute to absorption of the endolymph now move toward another one that is surgical method there is a first method that is conservative type in which we open the inner ear and do the endolymphatic sac decompression the other one is radical in which we surgically remove the labyrinth that is surgical labyrinthectomy so there is a complete destruction of labyrinth that's why there is no vertigo no labyrinth no vertigo in hindi we can say that na rahenga bas na bajengi basuri it's simple as that there is no labyrinth then there is no vertigo the other method is intratympanic gentamicin therapy so what occur in this gentamicin is selective vestibular toxic so in this treatment it kills the labyrinth without damaging the cochlea then there is no vertigo in hindi there is another saying that is saap bhi mar gaya aur laathi bhi nahi tuti and the last one is intermittent low pressure pulse therapy in which we observe that intermittent positive pressure delivered to inner ear fluids bring the relief from symptoms of meniere's disease it is done by the device called as miniet device and it is approved by fda thank you